one mowing. Yeah, woo! <laughs> well, I'm gonna take you guys with me on mowing today. You know what I wanna cover? Everything, you're just gonna ride along. We're gonna have a good time today, I promise you. I'm actually looking forward to this. Let me tell you a little bit something about my mowing crew. I don't know jack shit about mowing. Why do you think why do you think I don't say anything about mowing in videos? It's because I fucking don't know anything about mowing. Alright? I'm being completely honest with you. After interviewing Jonathan Potashnik and Ryan Foudre and Geek to Freak and all these amazing people, I'm like, I want to start my own mowing company. And I'll be honest with you, I had to. <laughs> um it was basically I either had to invest in a lot of equipment at the end of 2014 or had to give the government a lot of money. <laughs> I don't like the government. I don't like giving them my money. I like earning my money and reinvesting it into the company. And that's what I did. And so that's where we bought this truck. We bought a bunch of mowing equipment and we got started down a new venue. And what I'm doing today, I'm strapping on the work boots, strapping, getting the work shirt on, and I go out and mow every chance I get because I'm a firm believer you have to totally know the, the technical end of the business. You got to know how to actually go out and snip, 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 cut grass before you can really run a business because that is, that's the beginning. You got to walk before you can run. And just because I know how to hardscape, because I know how to knock down buildings and I can do Menard Superstores for excavating work doesn't mean I know jack shit about mowing to be honest with you and that's what I'm learning my I'm teaching myself I'm going out every job I'm timing it I'm looking at cutting patterns I'm not just out mindlessly mowing I'm actually learning and I'm actually enjoying it I love learning shit excuse my language totally sorry check this out bam, bam. no plates Five months. I've gone five months on this truck. I still don't have plates. I'm gonna see how long I can go. I got this this sticker in the back. That's all I got. <laughs> now, on the other hand, the new trailer. Yeah, I got all new equipment. I bought new equipment because I had to. I, like I explained to you, the IRS, the the tax thing, I had to buy new equipment and I can reinvest it. But I put plates on my trailer ASAP. There's you don't mess around with that. The truck you can mess around with, have some fun. <laughs> Alright, so what we gotta do is we're gonna get pull out the 30 inch. We're gonna be going bringing this. This one. Two back two backpacks, I think we'll bring. And we'll get uh, two trimmers. And then we've got two of these. We only need one. Uh, we'll, we'll pull. We got a brand new one, and then we got a used one here. That's my old. That's my classic snowmobile. I literally have had that since I was a kid. So this thing's ancient. Um, okay. So what is this? 52 inch grandstand I think that's what you call it I don't know it's kind of fun though I like it cruise around I can get on the sides of hills and what I do is when I go on the side of a hill I, like stick my leg on the side like I'm riding a bull and like the machine will be tipping way over and I'm hanging on I'm like yeah I'm like surfing I like surfing so this one's brand new we've never fired it up I'm not gonna fire it up I'm gonna keep it as new as possible I'm gonna keep running the same one for right now we need more we need more snow plowing. Lawn mowing reminds me a lot of snow plowing. We need more lawn mowing accounts. Then we're gonna fire this one up and then we have a 60 inch. They're all Toros. And the 60 inch is a ride on, zero turn. We gotta check the oil on it, Yokin. This one or this, that one? That's Yokin. Yokin, Yokin, Yokin. <laughs> Which one are we taking? And that's Jake behind us. Look at him. What's, the th what's, what's Jake doing wrong? Can you guys point it out? He's the new guy. He's brand new to this morning. He's never even seen a lawnmower before in his life. And the first thing he's doing wrong is he's standing in front of the boss with his hands in his pocket. I was gonna see say, that? You I'm see like, that right there? Oh! oh! Uh, he's also the father to my grandson, so he's got a pretty good chance that he can't get his ass fired. because <laughs> And he lives with me, so... 
I think his job is probably safe unless he runs over a bunch of baby ducks or something. Then we'll have to have a conversation. <sighs> I'm taking the Mustang out to the job sites today for a couple reasons. One is because of this. Because I can only shoot like two minutes worth of footage and then I have to run back to the office and download it. I don't know what's going on with my phone. It hasn't worked right for months. And two, it's by taking the Mustang, it also allows me in between while the guys are out mowing, I can grab brochures, I can grab flyers, and I can canvas the neighborhoods that I'm in so that while they're all busy getting all the work done and I'm learning all the ropes, I can also drop off next door and go to the block over and start handing stuff out. So it gives me a little freedom today. I'm going to take this. Normally I'd be just riding in the truck with them, but I'm going to mix it up a little bit because I'm shooting this. And... Let's get going. Let's quit talking. Let's quit yapping. Let's get going. Let's get stuff done. Looks like it's going to storm. Doesn't it, Yokin? Yeah, they said a couple sprinkles here and there, but it's not supposed to be like an all-day deal. Look, at, look how careful Jake is. <laughs> one of the most overpaid people for being wrong, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, this is first yard we're going to mow right here. There's a weird sign on the door. What does this sign say? Let's check this out. Oh, listen to the purr of the Toro engine. Actually, it's not a Toro engine. It's like a Kawasaki or something. I don't know. All right, let's teach Jake how to mow, okay? Um, now you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the way I'm going to explain it to him. We take the weed trimmers first, and we go all the way, all the way around while he's mowing. He'll start mowing the field. Okay. And we'll just hit all the edges. You can see all the spots he can't hit. Yep. And since there's going to be three of us, we'll either use two weed trimmers or one of us can take one of this and do a, you know, do some edging as well. We don't have to take a, a very wide swath. Um, I'm just going to weed whip. He's going to start weed whipping, Yokin. Okay. Do this one right? Yeah, you can do both. Whatever, whatever's clever. A sign on the door to say, Oh, I built this patio by the way. Yeah, woo, that's my real work. Hey, lawn mowing's real work, but this is what I'm good at as patios and crap. Do not enter ozone in progress. House was on fire. The restoration company's cleaning it up. Let's go look at the damage before my camera shuts off. We better hurry because I only got two minutes of recording time. And I gotta go pick up fuel and then bring it back. Man, you can smell it. Check it out. This house. It's my mother in law's house. Started on fire. Lightning struck it. I don't know what happened. But check it out. Getting gas. Okay, the easiest way, I gotta do pre mix. The easiest way to do this, since in my, my container I already have some gas I'm gonna just use the I gotta only mix two gallons at a time right but I have gas in here so I'm gonna use the output on the, on the nozzle to tell me when I hit two gallons that way I'm gonna be accurate with my mix so that's a good way to get it done you know what seems to happen I just pulled the fuel tanks out of the back of the Mustang here and you spill fuel all over that I do that on purpose I don't spill fuel in the back of my Mustang but what I do is I leave the top off the mix the, the fuel that I need to mix because I always seem to forget to get back to the yard or get back to the job site to actually put the mix in so I learned I gotta do something to remember so I just let the let the top kind of jiggle on there a little bit keep it loose because I'll tell you what I would rather dump two gallons of gas on the ground than to burn out my engines because I forgot to stick this in here. So what a little tricks, maybe I'll help you guys. What do you guys do? Put it in the comments. How do, you know what You know what else I wanna know? How do you guys strap down? Cause I still haven't figured that crap out. It takes me forever, it takes me longer to strap down than it does for me to get a job done. All right, let's fire up this Echo 
SRM225. Let's start whacking some weeds. All right, let's see how, this hasn't been ran yet today, so. Yeehaw! Third pull, not bad. I'll take a three puller. I'll do three pulls any day. Let's see, can I whack weeds and videotape? Oh no. Still running rough. Let's see, how did we get around here? Don't know. Starting to drizzle, we're starting job number two. Starting to rain. that bad. What's a little dribble hurt? As long as the grass doesn't clump up. I want to show you something. Something we do. I know you guys probably do it. But this is the order that we do all these jobs. We have it all routed and scheduled. That way we can buzz around from one to the next to the next. Let's see what we got to do. Grab a trimmer and go touch up some edging. Careful when it's wet like this, you kind of tend to skin the grass on these zero turns. Not ideal. Let's see what height he's mowing at. We don't want to go too low. Yeah. All right. Take a tour of this property. What we're gonna do for this gal? Blow off her deck. It's got a bunch of. Looks like this tree puked all over her deck. Touch that up for her. We'll go from there onto the net. <laughs> I just got a call from a customer who wasn't happy. He's an older fellow. And so I'm loading the weed whip into the Mustang. And I'm going to head over to his house. And what it boils down to is he wants company. To be totally honest with you. He wants somebody that when he we're out working in his yard, we will come out and chit chat with him and stop. And the problem is last time we were mowing, we were behind. We were... We had a tight schedule that day, and I just didn't have time to chit chat with them. And so I'm gonna make an extra effort. I'm just gonna go over. Oh, it reeks in here. <laughs> that two stroke in here just reeks. Anyway, we're getting rained out. Unfortunately, rains are coming in, and uh, we're just not, we're not gonna be able to continue. So we're gonna, this will be the last lawn for today. We're gonna bag this one up making sure that we get all the grass clippings off this one. This thing, this yard right here, it grows like it's on steroids. It's just terrible. So we're bagging it. So we gotta do some trimming here. We gotta blow this off, they're trimming. This backyard, we actually just trim this whole backyard up. It's just so skinny. It's almost not worth. Look at this thing. A teeny tiny baby backyard. This. Come back here, get this. Maybe we'll blow off their deck for them. Call it a day, I guess. I was hoping to work all day long. Mother Nature's not going to let us wrapped up this yard and what we're going to do is we're going to teach the new guy how to do a walkthrough and as we're teaching him we're going to probably pick up a few tips and tricks we're going to discuss it between the three of us one of the things that I want to look for when we're done with every single job I want to actually before we leave go just not set the equipment down 
and just walk the property. And a couple of things that I've noticed that I want to pay particular attention to is make sure the sidewalks are clear. There's no clumping grass in any of the yards. Like we have a little bit of clumping here, but this thing was looked like a hay field before. Another thing, Yolkin and Jake, what I want to look for is um, when it's wet like this, I notice we're getting grass sticking to the, to the houses, to the retaining walls, to the other structures. Okay, so we want to make sure that we get that all blown off. And then when we're done looking there, I want to look at we're the still neighbors. working. Just raining off and on, sometimes hard, sometimes not. We've got one account in this city. We just can't keep mowing it if we don't pick more up. So here's our brochures. Check them out. I'm canvassing the neighborhood. What do they call that? Bootlegging it, I guess. I don't know, whatever. Just going through the neighborhoods and getting uh, information out to every account that I possibly can. I want to go back to the story about the uh, customer complaint. Um, had an old guy and he just called just to complain. He said we did a good job. The point was we didn't stop and talk with him. And I'm going to tell you something. Some of these older people, when you mow their lawn, it isn't as much about the service as about the customer relations. So I called him up on the phone and I said, hey Dave, how you doing? And he's like, good, good. We started chit-chatting and he's like, yeah, I might go do some volunteer work. You know, it's just, you get older, you get lonely and you gotta get out of the house. And he's kind of confessing a little bit how he feels. And I says, you know what, Dave? Next time we're in the neighborhood, you wanna come mow with us? And he starts laughing. He's like, well, I had open heart surgery. He's like 87 or something like that. I'm like, no, Dave. You're not going to actually mow, just ride along with us. Just get out for the day. Go out and cruise around and hang out with us. I mean, I was on the phone with him, but you thought I would, I, he was tickled pink. And it's just about interacting with the customers. So his complaint was, we didn't, ha we didn't talk with them enough. You see how just stopping, taking the time, that makes a big difference. Now, before I run out of tape and got to go back to my house, Let's check out this yard. This one's hell. This hill is crazy. It's like straight up and down. Look at this thing. It's all hill. The whole yard is nothing but hill. You hear me talk about the two components of a business, one being the technical end of it and the second being the business end of it. Today's journey was the technical end of it, perfecting the craft. I hope you enjoyed the process. It's a learning curve for me. I got the, the business end of it down, but for mowing lawns, maintaining them, when those questions come up from the customers, I have to be able to give them an answer. And the only way that can happen is if I have practical in the field experience. That's what today was about. The systems are in place, they know how to bid, use Google Earth Pro, everything else. Now's the time for me to get the boots on the ground and make it happen. I love you guys. Put your comments down below. I want to hear from you. I want to know what your thoughts are. And if you got a good way of strapping down your equipment, put it down below. I want to hear how you guys.